All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Carlos Batista. I'm the CISO here at BetterCloud. And our topic today is four insider threats that should keep you up at night, specifically within your SaaS ecosystem. Uh, again, my name is Carlos Batista. I'm the Chief Information Security Officer here at BetterCloud. And essentially, I have uh, this responsibility for all traditional things considered cyber. So I've got you know, traditional security operations as well as compliance. But I also have, I'm also responsible for ensuring that our product, uh, our better cloud platform is defended and appropriately be built from a security perspective. And then I also have IT, which is something that is often, you know, that, that reporting relationship is actually often in reverse where security reports into IT uh, here at better cloud because we consider security so, to be so fundamental to our strategic success. We've actually sort of have that, that situation operating very differently here. And I'm joined here by Mo who uh, will actually introduce himself yeah, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Mohammed Khalid. Uh, you can call me Mo. Uh, I was actually the first solutions engineer here at Better Cloud, so it's been a really interesting journey this last few years to see how customers are not only adopting their SaaS applications, but more importantly, what kind of blind spots are being exposed within those SaaS uh, applications. Uh, so today we'll be showing you how we can address some of those four concerns that Carlos is about to articulate, as well as share some stories from the field from firsthand experience that I've gone through. Exactly. And, and, and yeah, and, and just a level set before we dive into this, we kind of want to just spend just a quick moment talking about what we mean by insider threat. And for us, it's not just the the malicious threat actor that we're all very familiar with, with various reports in the news, you know, stories like Edward Snowden, et cetera. But we also want to make sure that we consider the sort of like the well-meaning, but you know, perhaps negligent insider who's just trying to get work done but for whatever reason makes a mistake with how they handle sensitive data or how they manage uh, the various tools and technologies that they have access to. And then last but not least, we don't want to ignore compromised credentials, you know, that are, have been exploited by outsiders or others who are trying to move laterally across the environment to do additional harm. And so essentially here are the four things that we're going to walk through today with respect to insider threat within SaaS because it's a very different paradigm uh, operating in the sort of like SaaS paradigm or ecosystem than it is sort of in the traditional legacy environment. And, and so just to very quickly outline each of the four, there's data theft, you know, somebody taking data that they shouldn't, uh, group memberships being inappropriate or being overly excessive, and then uh, data sharing in terms of perhaps like, you know, like providing people a little more access than they should have to things from a data perspective. And then finally, the excessive permissions risk with respect to highly privileged access within various SaaS applications, such as super admin within G Suite or global administrator within Office 365. And so kind of diving into our very first one, which is data theft. Um, you know, I've been, I've been in security one way or another for about 20 years, uh, working with a variety of different companies, usually on the large corporate side. Uh, whether it's financial services, professional services, conglomerates, energy, I, I've seen one thing, unfortunately, fairly consistently throughout my career, and it's that you know, employees feel that the data that they work on and create kind of belongs to them. And it's, it's not necessarily a malicious thought process going on. They feel that that book of business that they built up of their customers or that source code that they you know, ingeniously wrote to help you to power their, their application at their existing company is theirs. And, and they feel that it's their right. By rights, they should be able to take that with them. Uh, and, and we all know that that's not accurate and that's not the case. And, you know, nevertheless, we see it. Um, you know, unfortunately, I, I've seen numerous examples of folks logging, like sales personnel using Salesforce on their last day to create a dump of all of their sales leads or all of their customers so that they can use that to help generate leads and new opportunities in business where at their new place of employment. And so there's, there is definitely a risk that I know I've seen with, throughout my career, both with legacy technology, that's sort of exacerbated a little bit in SaaS for a variety of reasons, because a lot of those centralized controls that we're so used to sort of managing internally and centrally, Mo, are, are, are generally you know, kind of democratize out to the users themselves. They're able to set permissions on files. They're able to do things that usually you'd, you'd rely on an administrator to do. And SaaS sort of makes that situation a little bit worse. Yeah, it's really interesting you say that. I mean, just, just with SaaS making the situation worse, I was actually working with a customer uh, three weeks ago. Uh, and as part of their offboarding workflow, what they were doing is, you know, employees are leaving. And because they didn't have the right type of controls to actually 
implement a better cloud at the time. And they found that that's why they were having the conversation with us. Prior to us, what they were doing is as part of the offboarding workflow when somebody's leaving, they actually gave the employee five days to go take out whatever they consider personal data, but right. there was no way for them to test what they were taking out, were they taking company information with them or not, right? We trust you, right? Just, it's, it's a whole trust concept <laughs> right there. And it, it was eye-opening for me to see that because they were doing that with a full trust concept because of the lack of controls that were there within their grasp. Right, because it's hard. And so, and, and so, Mo, why don't you kind of walk us through like very specifically how our own platform uh, is orchestrated to be able to help customers every day sort of look for these types of things, you know, whether it's specific data threat, data threats within Salesforce or other SaaS solutions to kind of help them look for the badness and stop it. Yeah, absolutely. So everybody should be able to see my screen. We're within the Better Cloud platform. And I want to share a couple of examples here. Uh, so a lot of what we're going to be doing today, you're going to see us within the alerts and within our workflows. Uh, but even from a data theft, data um, detecting user behavior perspective, you know, you'll go into our alerts and Carlos actually mentioned one of them that, that's pretty important for a lot of sales organizations, making sure that when salespeople are leaving, they're not taking any important leads with them to a competitor or to some type of other environment where they're going to lose their competitive edge. So you'll see here that we actually have alerts for Salesforce. And one of the alerts I want to call out is this alert around report being exported uh, by a user. So you can go into this alert and you can actually scope out whether you want to keep the alert as is. So in this case, uh, if you keep the alert as is, you would publish this and you would get notified anytime somebody is exporting a report. But you'll also get a lot of right. false positives with that, right? So what we allow you to do is actually start scoping it out further and say, you know what, if it's a user exporting a report and the user's department contains something along the lines of sales, right? Now we're, we're scoping it in, we're honing in on what we're listening for. We're listening for a sales department and even further, and if they're exporting reports and they're exporting, let's say maybe six reports within a 10 minute window. Well, now that's that's a flag for security to go look into that, understand what's going on. Sure. Is this user trying to do something there, right? So you would create this alert, you would determine uh, the severity of this alert and how you wanna get notified. And one of the things you're gonna see throughout this demonstration is really we're giving you the tools to, to get flagged, to get the notifications of when something happens. And depending on the severity of what you define, you might not want to have to manually go and fix that. You might want an automation path tied to that. So I'll give you another example that is closer to that, and we'll actually show you how we can automate that as well. So we talked about Salesforce, but now if we go into Dropbox, so your file management solution here, uh, you'll see here that I've actually scoped out an alert. I'm saying uh, files are being downloaded uh, within the Dropbox environment, and not only are they being downloaded, they're coming from a path that contains confidential. So I could have scoped this out saying maybe it's coming from the human resources path, maybe it's coming from the financial path, et cetera, mm -hmm. or in this case, confidential. But not only is it coming from that confidential path, uh, there's been more than 15 downloads within a 10 minute window. So now this is, again, a severe alert um, uh, for you. And you're getting this visibility that this is taking place, but rather than just getting the visibility and get triggered and notifications that this alert took place, um, you can actually automate that remediation path. So in this case, you're gonna say, all right, you know what? As soon as that alert gets triggered, so now you'll see my screen, and you'll see our workflow engine. You'll see that the workflow engines, uh, we're listening for that specific alert. So there's been confidential files downloaded. Well, Better Cloud, as soon as that happens, we, know we wanna do a few things. We wanna automatically revoke any devices that this user has access to. So if you look here, these are our dynamic fields. And essentially, this is what makes this automation scalable. We're saying, whichever user just satisfied this when condition here, take that action. Let's revoke the devices uh, from their account. But not only revoke the devices, you can go further and say, let's temporarily suspend their account. And as we suspend their account, if you want to go further, since this is pretty uh, severe, do we want to go ahead and delete the content from this member's devices uh, the next time they come online? Things like that, right? So suspend it, check off that box, uh, et cetera. But as you're doing that, then you're going further and you're saying, okay, now that we've taken that action within Dropbox, let's send a Slack message in our security channel. Uh, let them know who the user was. So you'll see here that we have the context of dynamic fields. So you can actually populate that notification path and specify the user, the email, et cetera, and build that into uh, the, the, the workflow notification. So whether it's a Slack message to security or an email to security or both, you're able to take that alert and build an automation path directly there. Yeah, and I, I mean, as a, strictly speaking, as a, as, as a customer of our own product, I mean, that's exactly how we use better cloud internally from a security operation standpoint like i don't just want it i don't just want an email kind of telling me that oh somebody did something bad i want to be able to kind of, kind of actually orchestrate and automate some kind some level of a response you know for my level one or level two analyst to be able to 
begin remediating and responding to that incident in a fairly automated fashion with a high degree of fidelity without a lot of room for like user or analyst error, if you will. So we, we use our own product to not only detect how you know, potential data theft within our environment, but also to actually help auto remediate as that activity happens on the fly. And so there's definitely value from my team from that perspective for there for sure. Perfect. And so now we're gonna go ahead actually, uh, and, and there's some great questions coming in and we, we have reserved some time at the end uh, to go over those questions. Uh, but before we move forward to the next section, promise you we will, we will uh, get to those questions at the end of the call. Um, we actually wanted to run a poll. Yep, and our first poll question today is just generally speaking, how worried are you about data theft, uh, especially like specifically employees taking data with them? You know, are you that very somewhat slightly or not at all uh, worried about that? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll just take about you know, another 10 seconds or so and let folks kind of chime in and we'll kind of give everybody the response or the results. And so we're about 25 seconds and all right, I think we've had most people respond. So we've, we've had about 53% vote, give it about 15 more seconds. Let's, let's see if we can get 80% and then we'll share those stats with you. Right, that's fine. All right, I think well, so, so we've just closed our poll and it, it looks like at this point, 73% of you are either very or somewhat worried about data theft within your organization. The remainder, the remaining 27% are slightly worried. I think the big answer here is that no one here is not worried at all. I mean, I think we all deal and face with, deal with potential data theft every single day in our environments in some way, shape or fashion, form or fashion. So let's move on to our next uh, major insider threat within SaaS. And that's groups. You know, so, so essentially group memberships that you know, over time just tend to have a natural what I would call a security drift mode where it's just you know frankly it's difficult it's difficult to kind of keep track of the dozens or hundreds or even in some instances thousands of groups across all of your different SaaS applications that you have to keep track of and ensuring that as people transfer departments transfer locations that all of that information all of those memberships remain you know relatively accurate yeah, and don't become stale over time. And so that's that's one of the biggest things that most companies have to deal with. And it's often a, a result of either, you know, like not the strongest IEM processes in place or just not, not the right tools to be able to detect and see that somebody's actually moved from one department to another. So what you wind up happening is, is like folks in marketing, you know, having access to finance or worse, having access to HR documents because those those files, those folders are still kind of locked down, are locked down the groups that these people are still members of. And so it's, 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 a, it's a tough problem to crack in, in almost any environment. SaaS makes that you know, complicated as well because there's just, as there's so many applications out there that you have to manage all of these entitles across. And so Mo, I mean, from your perspective, what have you seen across our customer base as you've implemented you know, like our solution just, you know, across our customer base today? Yeah, I would say group exposure is one that we run into with every customer. And this is one of those that's usually negligent behavior, as you see on the slide, right? It's more often than not what happens is IT, and I'll, I'll use Google for an example, IT will create an email distribution group. And when they create that email distribution group, whether it's for sales, IT, development, whoever they create it for, they'll create it and they'll, they might lock it down with the right settings. And the right settings may be, hey, we don't want anybody to be able to join this that's externally, or we don't want anybody within the organization to be able to view this or join this in general. And what I've seen actually in, in the real world scenarios is these groups get created and then they pass it off to somebody to own it within the respective department, right? Sure. And that person, as soon as they get their hands on the group, they might not know it, they might change the setting of the group because they need other people to get visibility into it, but now that leaves an exposure. So we work with the customer, we're working with the, um, a, a retailer, and uh, not retail actually, it was a genetics organization, and what we saw within their environment was they had uh, their executives email distribution group exposed, right? So everybody oh, could wow. see what was going on there, the conversations that were having there, the board meeting prep uh, information, then the discussions there. So as soon as we brought that to light, uh, they were excited about how we can solve that. Yeah, and it's I mean, part of it's just because security is not their job per se, right? And so it's, it's just a natural like, hey, I'm trying to grow the business. I'm trying to win for my company and, and my team. It's it's you know it's not something that's top of mind for you know somebody in a particular department to think about making sure that the memberships are accurate over time. 
And so, you know, from, from, the, from your perspective, Mel, what, what are some of the capabilities of our platform to help folks solve for that? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll, we'll jump back in here uh, and I'll go back to the alert section, actually. Um, and, you know, one of the questions earlier, just because we we're talking about this, was around why, why, isn't, why aren't these alerts in the native uh, admin consoles of some of these solutions like Salesforce or Google? And what you'll see here is actually more often than not, SaaS applications are designed with end user ease in mind. They don't have the tools or the design in there for the admin ease and they'll expose it through the API. So the reason we're able to get some of the information, even when we go to that question that was talking about the Salesforce report is because that's through the APIs that they have, their lightning APIs, you might have to be on certain SKUs. And even if you're on that SKU, if they don't have it within their uh, application, um, we can still listen to it from the API perspective and, and bring these alerts. And the same thing holds true for what I'm about to show you right now. Uh, so if we go to, for example, um, I'll show you here Slack. We have tons of alerts for Slack. And actually, let me filter in on that. Uh, tons of alerts for Slack, whether it's around data sharing that we'll talk about in, uh, shortly. But even from a exposure perspective, single channel guests added to team or multi-channel guests added to team. So these are alerts letting you know when somebody external has been added to your environment. You can take this alert as is and say something along the lines of, you know what, anytime somebody's added externally, we want to automatically use that alert as a workflow to remove their access after 30 days. So say they're contractors and contractors only have 30 day access, yep. um, have an automated workflow or an on-demand workflow to fix that as soon as 30 days goes by or 15 days or wh whatever their duration is, is to remove them and disable them in Slack. That's one path. Or you can even scope this out further, which I'll show here, uh, and say something along the lines of, you know what, in general, it's okay if we have external people added, but it's not okay if their email contains one of these contractor accounts, and those are the ones that we're specifically listening for. Right, right, right. So scope it out in that sense. So again, being able to go back, build out the alert, and depending on the severity and the scopeness, will dictate whether you're gonna remediate that in a manual fashion or an automated fashion. And same thing here, we talked about the email distribution group. So something that's not available natively in the admin console is that visibility is in regards to when those Google group uh, setting change, right? So we're gonna look at all the Google alerts we have here, and I'll actually look at group. And you'll see here that we actually have these alerts live. So we run, on a, we run off of a microservices architecture. Uh, so we're constantly listening and pulling to the APIs. So we're listening for whenever a group is created with these settings and also after a group is created, if those settings ever change. So is there an email distribution group where anyone can join? Is there a group where anyone can view? Is there a group allowing external members? A lot of times I'll talk to organizations and in general, they might be okay with an email distribution group where anyone can join but then they might not be okay with it if it has certain parameters. So in this case, the parameter might be the name contains HR or it contains executives, something along those sort, right? So you build out that alert and very similarly, even with those type of alerts, when it comes to the group management, either you can fix that in a manual fashion. So if I wanted to go in here and say, all right, you know, show me all my alerts that have been triggered that, um, that we don't want an automated path for. You'll see here that we see groups anyone can join. There's 25 violations. And I can actually look at these violations one by one and dictate and determine which ones I want to remediate manually. So maybe these four groups right here, manager, IT, marketing, admin, these shouldn't be groups where anyone can join. So you can go in here and make a direct API call and set that group membership setting and say, all right, those four groups that we have selected, let's go ahead and change it to only invited members can join, right? So what this is giving you is since this is something that like, companies I work with, they might be okay with this setting. It gives them the means to actually go and discover what the violations are and remediate it. Other companies I work with might not even be okay with that setting, right? And that's where it's really interesting because every organization you talk to has a, a different definition of what's okay, what's acceptable behavior and what's not, right? So in this case, you can also go further and say, let's build out a workflow. And we'll build out a workflow saying, as soon as this alert gets triggered, uh, where a group is set to anyone can join or a group is set to external members are allowed, let's automatically enforce that setting and say whichever group just satisfied that alert. So whichever group uh, triggered that alert, let's go ahead and change that setting to where only invited members can join. Fantastic. All right, that brings us to our second poll question for today. And that is, it's focused on, you guessed it, group memberships. And it's and the question is just you're curious from our perspective. How do you how are you managing uh, like group memberships and group settings across your SaaS environments today? 
are you doing it manually or are you in, inv involving or invoking some level of scripting? Uh, maybe you don't, <laughs> or do you use a SaaS operations management platform like Better Cloud, or are you doing something else? And so we'll just, we'll, again, we'll kind of pause for a little bit, take a few seconds to let folks answer, and then we'll come back and revert back with the results. And while we're waiting on this, uh, somebody, this, uh, somebody uh, posted a question saying, can you post a screenshot of the Slack guest alert uh, somewhere? Um, we'll, we're actually going to do a blog post recap of this webinar, so we'll get the recording. And within that blog post recap, we'll be sure to include those screenshots so you have access to them. All right, we've gotten the responses in, and it breaks down the, like this. So we got about 40% of you say you're manually keeping track of group memberships, you know, either in spreadsheets or just doing manual, like point in time reviews of your groups and memberships from there. 15% of you say you're doing scripting. 15% uh, of you do uh, use some kind of SaaS operations management platform like us. 20% uh, of you say you don't, and 10 say that you're doing yet something different. And so it's it's just, it, it's it's a tough nut to crack, Mo. I mean, it's it, it's, I know that I have been in, I've done I've done it manually in, in my past, and it's it's not an easy endeavor, especially at, at scale. And so having a, a more automated way of doing that certainly can help sort of like reduce the amount of time you spend doing these point in time assessments. Yeah, I mean whether you're doing it manually or you're doing it with scripting, etc. With scripting, every person who's running those commands has a different level of skill set, so human error comes into play. Sure. And from a manual perspective, same thing. Are you are you fixing it fast enough? Are you fixing it at the right time, or are you missing a step? And, and even just I mean scripting the offboard. Like if that person offboards or goes to another company, it's I mean you tend to lose a lot of that knowledge uh, as that person leaves the organization, kind of understanding what that script does and how it works. But let's go ahead and move on to our, our third insider threat vector, which is data sharing. And, and this, is, this is actually a pretty big one that, I, that, that many folks deal, but it's probably the most prevalent one that we've seen across our, our customer base and others as we, as we kind of talk through like how our platform works. Uh, it, essentially, it's the threat of having the end users of your various SaaS solutions, whether it's Box or G Suite you know, with Drive or OneDrive and O365, the potential for sharing information with people who are outside of the organization or even with internal users who shouldn't have access to that information. Trying to keep track of when that, if those types of events happen can be you know, a, a pretty painful and, and very highly manual thing to kind of keep track of. But more to the point, it also creates a data loss risk, right? I mean, you're essentially like if you if you have a uh, if you're in a, a medical team and you have a a group of doctors who are sharing files containing patient health data outside of the environment, you, you may have had, you have met, may have just had some kind of a privacy uh, event going on in your environment as a result. And so those things created a, a sort of like a second order of downstream impacts, you know, from loss of trust to impacts the share price or just the amount of money that you want to spend having to notify people and, 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 and deal with the 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 advent of having to deal with a security incident or data breach is definitely something that's pretty painful for a lot of organizations. And so that's it. so being able to kind of get a, get your hands around how data is actually being shared outside the organization is is vital to managing your SaaS environments because again, your users are able to kind of share that information without your knowledge. Yeah, and you know, in in my real world experience, this is something that we've run into a lot. I've run into a lot. And this really is, the, there's a gray area here because there's a concept of, is this from a negligence perspective? Is this from a maliciousness perspective? Uh, to your point earlier, some people believe that, hey, this, this is something that we, that we own so we can share it where we want, right? Yeah. Uh, there's actually some, uh, from a maliciousness perspective, on the borderline, I have two stories there. Um, we were working with a customer, they're a prominent VC firm. Um, and when they started using us, we start ingesting all their file information in regards to the metadata information, in regards to who it's being shared with, what kind of folders are being shared, where, what, what kind of files are being shared where. And as we start ingesting that information, uh, we asked them, we said, you know what, name some competitors you want to make sure files aren't being shared with, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they said, sure. And we named it and they were surprised because their, their, their primary bids folder, so this is the folder, you understand the VC firm, this is the bids folder that, where they had all their bids in for new companies they're looking to invest in. And that folder was shared with a competitor domain. And what was more surprising is the person that shared it with that domain was now at that organization, right? In, in, a, wow. in a senior management role. 
And it was eye-opening for them because they said, we've actually been getting outbidded the last two years. Um, and this opens our eyes in regards to why this is happening. That's just one story. You know, so an, another story in, in that regards from a maliciousness perspective, and again, it's funny, you talk to people and they'll argue whether it's maliciousness or negligence, is we're working with a genetics company, same type of approach. Uh, we start ingesting their file information and we start asking them, name some competitors you want to make sure files aren't being shared with. And they said, we don't have that problem. We said, okay, well, just <laughs> give me a few. So they said company A, company B. As soon as they got the company- Just to humor you, right? Yeah, just to humor me. <laughs> and as soon as they got the company C.com, we typed that in four highly sensitive files. And this is a genetics organization, so it's a really top secret stuff that they were working on, was shared with a competitor and same type of scenario, the person that shared it with them is now in a senior role at that competitor, right? So that's the type of problems that come from a data sharing perspective, especially when these SaaS applications aren't giving you visibility into what's the state of your affairs. I mean, a lot of these SaaS applications when it comes to file management, from an IT admin perspective, somebody that's an admin in that application won't get full visibility into what are all the files that exist within the account? What are all the files that exist um, within the account that are being shared? You don't get that visibility in those. Not luckily enough luckily enough for us, they open up those APIs, so we're able to ingest that and show that. And just to kind of flip the coin, because I talked about two of the scenarios with maliciousness, even from a negligence perspective, right? There's so much power in how you can share um, files, photos, et cetera. I was working with a daycare organization, a national daycare organization, and when they started using us, first thing I found for them was like, look, you have about 1,500 photos of kids that are shared publicly, so with a public link, adolescent kids. So anybody who has access to these links can see these photos of these kids. And what was happening was the teachers were sharing those photos with the parents. There was nothing wrong. There was no negligence there. They just didn't know that they were sharing it in a fashion that could be a data exposure right. for those children, right? It was just an education issue, actually, more than anything. Exactly. I mean, pun intended. <laughs> for sure. So let me go ahead and show you what we can do. There's a few, there's a few scenarios I want to touch on and actually even touch on how we saw some of the first two scenarios I talked about. Um, and we'll, we'll go back into the alerts. So we have alerts across our file providers, um, whether it's Dropbox, Drive, Slack, um, et cetera, um, and Box in this case. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say, all right, show me all my alerts for Box. And you'll see here that we have all these different type of alerts for Box that we're, ex uh, that we're exposing for you. And you can see here, you can actually say, you know what? I wanna see any time a file is shared externally. And just like I showed you before, you're able to come in here and build out that path. And you can say something along the lines of, you know what, file shared externally and it's being shared externally and it's coming from a path that's sensitive. So whatever that sensitivity is for you, if it's, if it's a human resources path or anything along those lines, you can scope that out here. So just like before, build out that alert um, and then use the workflow or the alert trigger to remediate that. A lot of what we've talked about so far is around building out and scoping. And I'm also gonna touch on how you can do on the fly searches as well. But before I get to those, the other thing I wanna talk about is we talked about file sharing permissions. So what kind of files are being shared with what kind of permissions, but what about the content that lives within these files, right? So if I go here and we'll go ahead and use Drive as an example, within here, we also do have the concept of not even listening for files that are being shared, but what kind of content exists. So in here, you'll see we have an alert that's showing you uh, a Drive document has been shared publicly, but not only has it been shared publicly, it contains some sensitive information. So you'll see that we have the different categories that are broken out here. Uh, you can break it out by region, uh, or you can just scroll across the information types. So all the different type of information templates we have here. So we have this for our file providers, content scanning, and you can now take your file shared publicly, your file shared externally, and also scan against the type of information that's being shared, which will really drive the severity of the incident that's taking place and what kind of remediation path should take place there. So you build out this alert, and after you build this out, then as we looked at before, you can go into the automation. And from an automation perspective, I can say, okay, let's go ahead and look at this content scan scanning workflow. And what do we want to do here? Well, as soon as this file is shared, as soon as we hear that file is shared publicly that contains social security numbers, you know, first thing we want to do is maybe let's turn off access to this file so nobody can access it anymore. Let's send an email to the owner of that file. And again, using those dynamic fields, uh, you can actually populate this message and say, I wanna take whoever the owner is, maybe take their owner email, uh, et cetera, provide that in that message and say that we've changed the sharing settings and now we're gonna transfer it over to either your manager. So you could say, you know, have it go to the manager or do we want it to go to some type of security account like we have here? Not only that, even after it's transferred, maybe you wanna make sure the file is really locked down and say, nobody can download these files 
And as we showed before, send a security message, whether it's an email, Slack message, et cetera, uh, to the appropriate parties to let them know uh, that this incident has taken place, right? So a lot of what we've shown you is around, one, building out alerts and policies for things that you're aware of or things that you want to know about, and two, how to automate those things that you've scoped out. But then there's also the concept of, you know what? You don't know what you don't know. So what do we do when we don't know what we want to look for, right? And that's where you can come into our files grid. So if I go into my files grid, you'll see here, I have about 20, you know, 2,000 files within our demo account. And these are files across all my providers. And I made that comment earlier that a lot of these SaaS providers don't give admins visibility into the, the landscape within their environment. What kind of files exist, who's sharing, et cetera. So we surface up all this metadata so you can search on the fly. Give you a really prime example here. Before I came to Better Cloud, I didn't think of Slack as a file management solution. I thought of it only as a collaboration tool. Right, and you could put a lot of files in Slack, just share them in, in, in messages, absolutely. Exactly, so in this case, we're gonna surface up and show you what are all the files that are being uploaded in Slack. And not only are they being uploaded, you know what? Maybe we wanna look at the files that are being shared publicly. So now we can hone in on those and get that visibility and say, all right, you know what? W9 form is being shared. What do we wanna do here? Well, let's see who shared it. So Kim shared it. We'll have a talk with Kim after this webinar. Um, and she shared nice it in the, talk. yeah, a really nice talk. <laughs> uh, and then uh, we shared it and she shared it in the New York channel, right? So you're getting that visibility and then being able to go ahead and say, all right, now we found these four violations. So you're doing it on the fly. You don't even have a policy set up. You found these four violations and then you can go ahead and actually execute that API call directly from here and say, revoke that public sharing link. This is really powerful because this is a great way to come in understand things that you're look, listening for, discover things that you might not have been uh, aware of. After you discover it, fix it right away, and then jump back into our alerts to build out a remediation policy for that. That's exactly right. Well, thank you, Mo. And that brings us to our next poll question, which is, do you have a way to determine if you have any confidential data shared publicly? It's pretty binary, yes, no, not sure. Uh, take a moment to answer that, and we'll chime back in momentarily. All right, so 62% of you say yes, you do have a way to determine if and when that happens. Uh, the remainder of you, 23% say no, and 15% say not sure. And so it's definitely a mixed bag, but it's it's definitely a, a difficult problem for all of us to kind of figure out and crack for sure, whether it's we're talking about on-prem or legacy environment or infrastructure or you know, external SaaS-based solutions across your environment. Which brings us to our final uh, major insider threat vector, which is excessive permissions. It's just you know how it happens. I mean, IT just has you know, just thinking about what SaaS is and how it works. You you often wind up giving the access to that that's needed to manage the system to your end users in one way, shape, or form. It's just it, it's just the nature of the beast, especially within smaller organizations for sure. And so you wind up having folks who have within the G Suite space uh, super admin permissions or within the o365 space global administrator permissions all over the environment and trying to trying to keep up with who is given access to these highly privileged groups is really is really difficult and it, again it kind of speaks to the whole security drift issues that we've mentioned earlier with respect to you know, data sharing and group permissions and so it's, it's it's just one of those issues that frankly can create a, a number of threats for any organization, if, if somebody's added to a uh, highly privileged group in, one, in a particular SaaS application and they do something wrong, like they they break it or they, 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 they delete a very sensitive folder within Box that you know kind of is used for the financials of the business, that can create some pretty significant business impacts. And so being able to sort of have eyes on when people are added to these most sensitive or highly sensitive groups or privileged groups, is vital to kind of ensuring you're, that you've got good security within your SaaS environment. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, what I see with the customers I work with more often than not is, is essentially the first bullet point here, right? They really have no choice. And the reality is not all SaaS applications are designed equally. Sure. Uh, and, and they aren't. You know, some of them might have granular admin permissions in there. Some of them don't. And rather than having to go and get used to all these different user interfaces and these different uh, consoles, they just, when somebody needs access, they'll just say, all right, you know what? We don't have time to look at the, the what, what these permissions allow, or maybe these maybe the tier two permission is not enough, and the only permission left is a super admin permission, right? right? So that that lack of on how SaaS applications and admin controls are designed is something that customers are facing all the time. I mean, there's a customer I work with, large retailer, that 86,000 users within their account, 
out of those 86,000 users, they had 56 super admins. And it was eye-opening for us. It was like, wow, that's, that's a lot of super admins. Uh, so, you know, they started asking us, like, well, what can you do to help us with this? Because this is a big problem, not only for this one application, but just giving our users a central console where they can manage what they need to without having to jump into different They user. probably had that same issue across whatever X number of SaaS apps that they had, right? That's exactly right. I mean, the super, I mean, that was just one application, but even the other SaaS apps they had, it was well beyond the, the recommended number that we usually see about three to six, depending on the company's size. It was, they were all up there, right? Sure. So let me go ahead and show you what we can do within Better Cloud to help you with that. And, there, and there's a few, there's a few um, ways to approach this. And the funny enough, this, this excessive permission thing, it's one of those that we see every single time. It's a violation almost in every environment we work with. So if we go back to the alerts section here, what you'll see here is regardless of the SaaS application that we have connected, if I go in and type admin, this is where you can come in and actually see that we have admin alerts across all the SaaS providers that we integrate with. So you'll see things like when a super admin is added, when a super admin is removed, and a super admin count exceeds threshold. And that threshold one is interesting, right? And, and you'll understand why we have that in there. Because the first problem we're trying to solve is one, give you visibility into how many super admins you have. Sure. Right? But then after you solve that problem, what else do you want to do? So first of all, we're giving you that visibility that this is how many super admins you have, maybe you have 56, et cetera. But now that we know how many you have, let's go into Better Cloud's role-based privileges. And what's going to happen here is you can actually create roles directly in Better Cloud. So now you're giving them one centralized user interface. So they're not, they don't have to worry about jumping between applications. One the centralized user interface, and let's say it's a tier one user um, role that you're creating, then you can come in here and say, okay, well, this tier one role, what kind of access do I want them to have within Better Cloud when it comes to user management? Well, when it comes to Google, Maybe I only want tier one to be able to edit the Google users. When it comes to Office 365, maybe I only want them to be able to view users. When it comes to Slack, maybe I want them to have full questions or, or, or full, uh, full rights there, right? And when it comes to Dropbox, maybe we only want them to have create rights. So what you're doing in here is you're building out the permission set for what your end users can do or your admins can do within Better Cloud itself. And right now we're just looking at the user uh, concept. I mean, there's all these other assets we have in here. What can they do with files? You know, do we want them to be able to edit files from a tier one perspective? Maybe not. Maybe we just want them to be able to view the files and that's it, right? From a security perspective, you can come in here and say, you know what, maybe they have full access to these files, et cetera. So the first part was giving you visibility into how many super admins you have. The second part is now that we've given you visibility, now let's create some granular roles. And after you create these roles, what happens is that same customer we're working with that has 56 super admins, then they use this threshold alert because they said, okay, now we've created these roles within Better Cloud, and we they actually took that list of 56 super admins down to three because there were permissions that I just showed you, and then they were actually able to go in the native admin console, whether it's Google, whether it's Dropbox, Slack, et cetera, and downgrade their permissions in there because they don't need to have admin permissions within those environments to execute the API calls that they can do directly in here, uh -huh. right? So that's, that's how you can use that threshold alert uh, to handle that. And so once you uh, build out that threshold alert, then you can have a workflow in place. Uh, and that's what this customer has. They have a workflow in place that says, as soon as that alert gets triggered, where we have more than three super admins, automatically remove that new person's admin rights and email security and email their manager to see if they can go through the approval process or if they even need those type of rights. Yeah, that's exactly what we do. I mean, we have three super admins in G Suite and if a fourth gets added, do, you know, we remove that person somehow and, and then actually notify my team who then has to respond to a potential security incident. Right. That's and, exactly then, what we do. Yeah. and then the power here also is when you create those role-based privileges directly in here, what you'll see here is when you open up our, what we call our action engine, essentially you're getting visibility into all the different API calls we're getting from these providers. So depending on the role that you provide, so if you, if you uh, provide a role or, or assign somebody to a tier one role where they don't have the delete capability, they won't see any of these, these delete API calls that, right? But also, you know what? Maybe you your admin that is the administrator of Better Cloud is going on vacation for a week or so. Well, during that time, you might need to assign somebody a temporary access role, right? So what you'll see here is, you can go into our privileges and you can actually create these roles and you'll see that we even have a temporary access role, which is still somewhat minimal compared to super admin, but enough to probably have them do their day to day. So when that scenario happens, now you have that temporal, you can actually go in here and say, all right, somebody's going on vacation. Maybe your admin's going on vacation. We want to go ahead and take Alex. 
And when we take Alex, Alex is going to need temporary super admin access role for a few days. And all those workflows I showed you earlier, we based off of like, you know, when something happens, this workflow is going to trigger, but you can also run a workflow on demand. So in, in this case, you're going to see here as I scroll down that I have a workflow for assigned uh, time-based access role. So in this case, your admin's going on vacation. You want to assign somebody temporary access role. You'll see that we already have this workflow built where it assigns that user that you selected that temporary access role. You can actually modify how many days that is. If the person's going to be going to be gone for five days, if they're going to be gone for three days, let's say they're gone for four days, say assign that user to the role, wait for four days, and then automatically remove their access. And anything that you do in here, just to kind of uh, uh, close the bow or you know, wrap up the bow, however you want to say it. Uh, anything that you do in here, because a lot of people say, okay, well now Better Cloud gets complete visibility into uh, or is, is a, com a complete command center where people are going in and executing these actions. What about from an audit perspective? Well, even from an audit perspective, we have a full audit log that goes back to beginning of time. So you can actually go and search from a compliance perspective, who did what, when did they do it, who had access, when did they get access, and even if you need to, either live within our audit logs or if you have a sim provider that you're you're centralizing all your logs into you can have these audit logs pushed directly there as well sounds good so we are about we got about three to five minutes left so let's kind of dive into our final peer uh, poll question for the day and it's how are you managing who has excessive permissions in your SaaS environments i mean again do you do it manually do you employ some level of scripting do you have a SaaS operations management platform or are you doing something else entirely or maybe you're not so we'll we'll take just a few seconds this time around to kind of let folks answer and then we'll chime in. All right, I think we've got a pretty good quorum of folks. So it looks like 71% of you are doing it manually today with the with with 6% doing scripting and another 21% or so using a SaaS operations management platform like BetterCloud. And so that, that brings us to just about the very end of our webinar today. Uh, if you want to learn more about insider threats, there's a fantastic uh, report that we published a little bit earlier this year that focuses on the, re the results of over 500 IT professionals and security professionals who were surveyed on their perspective of insider threats and how, to ma how they manage it within their own digital workplaces. And so definitely check it out at the URL below. And yeah, and I just want to add a comment real quick. A lot of times as I'm working with customers, they, they ask, you know, what's the best way to get executive buy-in, right? What's the best way to have them get visibility into, and actually have them worry about some of these concerns because maybe my executive doesn't understand this. So this insider threat um, uh, white paper that Carlos just talked about is, is one that I'm always sharing with them. And even as part of today's webinar, now you're going to have an additional ammo is you can share this um, white paper with them as well as the recording that we're going to be providing after the call. Absolutely. All right, so we are at, so we got, got time for like, I think a question or two. So let's go ahead and take one here. Uh, Mo, why don't you read it off? Yeah, so the question that came in, it says, which one of these four threats are you most concerned about? So uh, from my perspective, it's a really good question. I think the one that kind of jumps out at me is the data sharing one, just because it's so prevalent across all of the different SaaS apps that you use or manage and love, like Box and Slack and, and, and G Suite, et cetera. It's so hard to keep track of that because, and it's because it's so easy to share things outside the environment, and it just takes one real bad slip up to create a, a privacy or security incident that may require notification as a result. So the other three are definitely worry me. The one that kind of like keeps me up at night the most is, is certainly that last one. And then. Uh, all right, that kind of brings us almost at time. So if you want to learn more about how BetterCloud can help you with insider threat, definitely visit us at the URL that we have below. Uh, at this point, we want to thank everybody for taking the opportunity and some time out of your, your, your day to kind of chat with us or kind of be with us as we talk through insider threat within the SaaS ecosystem. Mo, I want to thank you for taking the time to kind of walk folks through how our product helps our customers today defend against those threats. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day or afternoon or wherever you happen to be. Thanks, everyone.